Hope you're doing well today. It's January 2nd. Our reading today comes from Genesis chapters 4 through 6. I just want to look at the account of Cain and Abel today. Genesis chapter 4, verse 3. In the process, process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. I'm sure you're familiar with the account. The question is, why did God not respect Cain's offering? That is the question. Because Cain brought an offering to the Lord in the process of time. Okay, a few other passages, I think, help us out. Uh, I'm hoping uh, to understand it a little better. First one is in Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 11, at verse 4, in the midst, at the beginning of the list of the heroes of faith, verse 4, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. Okay, Abel brought his in faith. Cain did not bring his in faith. Well, where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. These men, Cain and Abel, God was not just leaving it up th up to them to figure out how to worship. God doesn't do that. That obviously, it, it would not have been fair of God to not convey his standards and for Abel to bring it in faith. Okay, because obviously Cain, there there's something going on with Cain's offering. Abel brought his in faith. Cain did not. I think that's one thing you can show very clearly from the Hebrews passage. All right, let's look at another passage, though, and this one is in 1 John. In 1 John chapter 3, at verse, and you might notice, he who sins is of the devil, verse 8. Okay, verse 11, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. What works are those? We're talking about the offerings. And it says that Cain's offering was evil. Why was it evil? It's because it wasn't in faith. It was not what the Lord wanted him to do. All right, very simply, that's why the Lord rejected it. It was not what the Lord wanted him to do. It was not being done in faith, and therefore it was it was evil. And again, remember where faith comes from. Okay? We should love one another. Notice that as well. Notice that thread. That we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. Come up to Jude now. In Jude... Let's get it up there. And Jude, as it speaks about, verse 4, When Jude is warning them, For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord, Je the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? And he starts going through, giving a few examples of how the righteous were surrounded by the unrighteous. Angels who do not keep their proper domain had to be dealt with. Sodom and Gomorrah, okay, that had to be dealt with. These dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, okay, and speak evil of dignitaries. And all of a sudden it notices, it, pardon me, all of a sudden it goes to verse 11, Woe to him, for they have gone in the way of Cain. They've run greedily in the air of Balaam for profit and perished in the rebellion of Korah. Don't have time to talk about those latter two, but they how have they gone in the way of Cain? Okay, and just notice these were described as spots in their love feast. While they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They're clouds without water, carried about by the winds, raging waves of the sea. Okay, you have all of this description, and one of the examples of this sort of behavior is Cain. He did not bring his offering in faith. His works were evil. Okay, he did not do what the Lord wanted him to do. Now, let's back up. Let's back up to Genesis and think, um, peel back another layer of it, if you will. Back in Genesis, 
because he does bring his offering to the Lord. So why did the Lord not respect it? It's not in faith. Because it wasn't being done in faith, it was evil. And it's not things are not just in faith because someone says they're in faith. They're in faith because this is what God has said to do. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, right? The substance of things unseen. Okay, so you're looking, so it's not in faith. Faith, faith is not just saying, I have faith. That's not what it is. Okay, now those other verses, the Hebrews passage, the First John passage, as well as the Jude passage, I think they help us to understand why God did not respect Cain's offering. Because along with the, these ideas that we've already spoken about, we need to recognize that Cain hated his brother. And we know what other passages say. If you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother has something against you, leave it, right? Leave it. Go be reconciled to your brother. You don't get to hate your brother and then think you're okay with God. That's also 1 John. Well, Cain, if he had any animosity towards his brother, if he hated his brother, then it nullifies the worship. It nullifies the offering. So that may have also been a part of what's going on here. You might look at what Cain, the name Cain literally means acquired. I have acquired a man from the Lord. And you might think about what Abel literally means. Breath or nothing. You don't think Cain looked down his nose at Abel? And if we are puffed up and proud, God wants no piece of our offering. And it nullifies the whole thing. But also, as we think about that idea, Cain was a tiller of the ground. Abel was a keeper of the flock. Well, what are their two offerings? When you look at the law, what are those two offerings? One's a burnt offering. The other one's a peace or a thank offering. In Abel bringing of the flock and its fat as well, what was Abel, what were the burnt offerings for? They're for the remission of sins. They're for atonement. That's what they're for. Pointing towards the Messiah. We understand that. But they're for atonement. Without the shedding of blood, there is no atonement. But was Cain willing to shed blood? No, he brought a thank offering. You have to humble yourself. And there, I wonder if a part of what's going on here is not a recognition of sin and a confession of sin. And as you think about what both men did, in order for Cain to have been pleasing to the Lord, with all these other things we've spoken about, in order for Cain to have brought of the flock and their fat, who would Cain have had to have come to? Who would have Cain needed to go to? Cain would have needed to have gone to his brother because he was the keeper of the flock. Now, would Cain have been willing to do that? And would Cain have been willing to ask for help? Think about that picture. He has, he's a tiller of the ground. He can't make, he can't make an offering pleasing to the Lord without someone else's help. And hopefully you start seeing what Abel is a type of. You might think about that idea and all these other verses that, that we've spoken about. So anyway, hope this has been helpful for you. Appreciate you. Hope you join us for our next brief look into God's Word.